It's one of the most expensive mistakes in San Francisco, and they're still trying to fix it. Four day period last month, San Francisco's Millennium Tower tilted another quarter of a This an morning, engine. my office filed a lawsuit against the developer of the Millennium Tower. Everything came to a stop in late August because the fix was actually making the tower sink even more. From bad to worse, the Millennium Tower isn't just sinking and tilting, we've now learned it's also sliding. Since the completion of the project in 2009, it has been a complete nightmare. The tower has now sunk approximately 18 inches and is leaning toward the northwest corner of the site approximately 29 inches. Now, this might not sound like a lot, but for a tower that's 58 stories, this could have damaging effects to the building services. And experts have reported that if the tilt continues and reaches 40 inches or more, then this will have damaging effects to the elevators and plumbing as well. So it's a race against against time to fix the issue. But what exactly is causing the tower to lean? And most importantly, is the tower safe? Well, in this video, I'm gonna be answering those questions. So let's get started. First, it's important for us to understand the project's context. Now, the tower is located in San Francisco along the Bay Area, and it sits along the original shoreline. So essentially, it was built on artificial fill. Now, this plays an important role when designing the foundation of the tower. So upon reading articles, I found out that the tower's foundation was only drilled down to old clay, and it wasn't drilled all the way to bedrock. Now, for me, this was a bit shocking to learn when I first read this because typically with towers of this height at 58 stories and it being constructed out of concrete, if the tower was constructed out of steel, it would be a lot lighter than if it was constructed out of concrete. The foundation was really designed for a lighter building and they must have decided to uh, either risk it or uh, convince themselves that it would work for the much heavier building, but clearly they pushed it past its limit. So when I read that the foundations was only built to old clay, I was a bit surprised. But at the same time, I also learned that this is not uncommon for buildings in San Francisco to only be built to old clay. The tower right across from it is a lot taller and heavier and it's not experiencing any of the issues that the Millennium Tower is experiencing with the building tilting on one side. And that specific tower, its foundations was designed all the way to bedrock. So had the Millennium Towers designed the foundation to bedrock, perhaps I wouldn't be here doing this video. Now the lead engineer, Ronald Hamburger on the Millennium Towers project says the issue of the tower's leaning is not due to the fact that the tower's foundation did not go to bedrock, but rather it's the transportation hub that's being built next door that's causing a lot of issues. So that project had to remove and depump a lot of water out of the soil, and that in turn affected the Millennium Towers. Now, now, I don't fully completely agree with this. However, do I think that that could have contributed to the accelerated rate of the leaning tower? Yes, in my opinion, I do think that did help to accelerate the leaning, but was it the main cause that caused the tower to lean? In my opinion, no. However, I'm also not an engineer, but just based on my experience working on projects as an architect and my experience of just reading about the project and hearing other engineers and experts talk about the project, I do think that had the project been built to bedrock, similar to the tower that's just adjacent to the project, then perhaps we wouldn't be having these issues. So is this a big deal? Now this takes us into the second point. Sinking buildings are common. It's important to note that this is part of the building settlement into the ground. And upon the building being occupied by people, it's only natural for the building to sink and settle within the ground. However, the sinking should be done evenly. And this is something that the engineers calculate when they're designing the concept for the foundations, that they do calculate that the foundation and that the building will sink a certain rate through a period of time. However, in case of this project, the tower has been sinking at an unusual rate and it's tilting unevenly. And this presents some issues because the building was never designed for this kind of movement. And so all of the building services like the plumbing and the elevators weren't prepared for this type of movement in such a short period of time. Now, this type of unplanned 
tilting isn't something new. There are many buildings around the world that has been experiencing this. Like the Big Ben, if you look at it closely within the pictures, you'll notice that it has a slight tilt to it. And you have the Tower of Pisa in Italy that is also leaning. And there are projects that are intentionally designed to have a slight tilt and lean, and it's designed as part of the building concept, which is slightly different from a building that is unintentionally leaning, I must say, but there are many buildings across the world that are designed with this concept in mind and it's part of the design concept. Like this skyscraper that's 35 stories in Dubai that is leaning five times that of the Leaning Tower of Pisa. I've also personally lived in a house that was leaning. It was in a townhouse and this was during my undergrad when I was in architecture school. And this townhouse was all sinking in the middle. Now, luckily, it was only a two-story house. It was made out of wood, which is a lot more flexible than concrete. And that house was sitting in the middle of a block of townhouses, which gave me some comfort every time I was living in that house. And the funny thing was, anytime I would drop anything, all of my pencils and pens, they would all roll onto one area. So the nice thing about it was I always knew where everything was located. And I never lost any pencils or markers because I know where to find them because they would all just roll into one point of the house. But there were some challenges I have to say because I was in architecture school, I would do a lot of drawing and sketching on my table, on my drafting table, and I would build models as well. And I didn't realize this at first, but then when I would go to class and I would bring my models and sketches, I noticed that everything was designed on an angle. And this was not intentional by the way, because I didn't want it to be on an angle. But even my sketches, I would look at it and I'm like, like, oh my gosh, everything is on a slight lean and tilt. So then I had to adapt all my furniture to accommodate that difference of that lean on my floor so that I would draw everything more intentionally and I was able to control that difference of the lean. And this brings us into the third point. Is the tower safe? It's been reported by the lead engineer on the project that the tower is safe and people continue to live in the tower as the tower is experiencing the leaning and sinking. Although it is structurally safe, it does present issues with the elevators, for example, because of that displacement and the elevators were never designed for this type of movement. The gaps between the elevator and the structural core start to increase and that presents a tripping hazard. Even though the building is structurally safe, it was never designed to have this type of movement and this type of tilt. And so all of the other building elements will start to experience issues. And there were reports of cracking windows, which some say were not due to the foundation issues. However, it makes you think that it could potentially be related. And if you look at pictures of the foundation walls, there are extreme structural cracks on those foundation walls. When I saw those photos, it was extremely alarming. Now they are trying to fix the issue by drilling foundation piles to bedrock along the northwest corner of the site where it's leaning. So they're gonna be drilling piles along the portion of the tower that's leaning in order to even out the settlement of the tower. Now, the Millennium Towers has been receiving a lot of attention for these issues, but this is also something that isn't new to San Francisco. A lot of their side walks has been sinking and cracking and displacing and I'm also surprised that the engineers didn't see this and take this into account along with the city as well when they approved the plans. So this leads us into the fourth point. Why is this a problem? Now since this went public this really affected the real estate value of some of the units because this leaning and tilting was never part of the design concept so the value of the units went drastically down and all also images of the foundation cracking and all, and all of the issues of some of the glass cracking and all of that really scared away a lot of people from wanting to buy units and it really decreased the value of a lot of the units as well. Now there has been attempts to fix the issue and that has accelerated the rate of the tilting. However, the last attempt seemed to stabilize the tower. This was reported back in November of 2022. Now I haven't heard any other reports since then 
but I'll keep an eye to see how the project progresses. So because the value of the units was being affected, this really led them to look into ways to try to fix and resolve the issue. Now, although sinking and settlement of buildings is normal, what's not normal is for the tower to be sinking unevenly and resulting it to lean on one side more than the other. And of course, if this continues at this rate and if it reaches 40 inches or more, then this is gonna impact all of the building services, the elevators, the plumbing, all of the materials are gonna to start to have all of this movement and cracks and gaps. And those also present safety concerns for the residents as well. And the other big question, and this is perhaps not only for this project, but for San Francisco overall, is can the building withstand an earthquake? Although earthquakes are not common in San Francisco on a regular basis, they did experience an earthquake back in 1906 that devastated the city after such a tragic event that the buildings would take in consideration more safety protocols and have the foundations go to bedrock because a building that is tilting on one side, can it withstand an earthquake in comparison to the other buildings that are more safely secure in the ground? Now, of course, if the earthquake is at a huge magnitude, then perhaps none of the buildings have a chance, but we could design better buildings to have a greater chance to withstand such an earthquake. There was an expert that did a study of the buildings in San Francisco and the Millennium Towers was at a vulnerable state if there was a, an earthquake because it is leaning on one side. This does bring up a bigger question as to how prepared San Francisco is in terms of their buildings and skyscrapers for a potential earthquake. And there's been many local industry professionals that have risen red flags about this issue and how we should be preparing our buildings better for a potential earthquake. Moving forward, it's great to see how this project has been an example and has made a lot of the newer projects change change your approach to their design of their foundations. And it also has made the city of aware of the issues that could potentially happen. Now, with this project, there has been a lot of finger pointing. Everyone is blaming everyone and so on. But what I think is very important to acknowledge is that no project, no building is ever done by one person alone. And I think it's important for everyone to take ownership of the issue as well. And that includes the city, which to me, in my opinion, the city should be the most responsible in this case, because they're also the ones that approve the plans and approve the structural design of the project. Also, as a buyer, when you're buying pre-construction, it's important to be very careful. Like many of the residents in this tower, they bought pre-construction. They didn't know what the quality of the construction was gonna be. They really didn't know what they were getting themselves into. Remind yourself and be mindful that you're taking on a lot of risk because you don't know what the structure is gonna be like and what the quality of construction is. Now. If you know and you have experience of working with that builder and you've done your research on that builder and they have a good track record, then that reduces the risk a little bit when buying pre-construction. But I would be very cautious when you buy pre-construction. And this is a perfect example of how you should be very mindful and careful when you're buying a unit from a builder that you do your homework and you understand first the track record of that developer. Do they have experience of building towers or buildings within that area? And what is the construction quality of the buildings that they have constructed? So if you are gonna buy pre-construction, just make sure to do your homework. And when you are purchasing something after pre-construction and the building is built, the other thing that I would recommend you to do is to always not just look at the unit and the amenities, but make sure examine the foundation walls, go to the lockers, look at the foundation walls, look at those walls. Do you see structural cracks? You might not have any experience to understand what is a structural crack, but you will notice a red flag. Like if you see extreme big cracks on foundation walls, that is not normal. There is something wrong with the construction quality of the building. And so I would make sure to pay attention to that, especially if your building that you're purchasing or you're looking into was built or is built along a shoreline. So for example, uh, the building that I live in, one thing that I made sure because I know this building that I'm in is built on artificial fill and I'm very close to the coastline and the shoreline that I was, to be honest, a little afraid. <laughs> Even though I do trust the professionals and everyone that worked on this building, 
when I go on the parking levels, it's something that I pay very close attention is I look at all the walls. So there are five parking levels in my building and I make sure to examine all of the levels, but especially pay close attention to the last parking level down below. So in my case, it's P5, so level five. And I look at those foundation walls and I pay close attention, even though I do trust the professionals that worked on the project. To me, that just gives me some reinsurance that everything is built fine. But anyways, I always make sure to check and I remember the other day there was a crack and there was water coming out and I was like, oh my gosh, what's happening? But then I realized that's, that's where the water tank is. So it's not related to any structural issues. But when you start seeing big cracks in the foundation walls and there's a lot of them, then you know that there's something, there's a rooted problem there because that's not normal. It's not normal to see those kind of cracks. And within my building, you don't see those kind of structural cracks in the building. So just make sure to do your homework. And I hope to see you on the next video. Until then, bye everyone.